Army, would you say, so when I met you, you were basically a seven-year-old. <laughs> like, you look completely different. <laughs> you were, I, <laughs> I, I met him, I met you, like, when you were, what, like, 20 or, ni- or no, no, like, 19? No, 18. I was 18. 18, 18 yeah, 18. You were, like, seven years old. Uh, I guess, <laughs> like, <laughs> you were 18. You were, like, seven years old. <laughs> My name's Monish, and I'm your main host. Welcome to Real Talk. So on the podcast, I asked my co-host, Kevin and Army, as well as myself, uh, how painfully unfunny were you growing up, right? Stories and everything. And how can you, this is the most important part, how can you develop your humor, right? The dirty little secret with every gal, every guy is that they want to be funny, right? <laughs> hey, I'm the funny guy. Like they, they want to be someone who can make laughter, you know, come out of other people's mouth holes, essentially, right? And getting to a place where that actually is a reality, it's hard, it's painful, it's shitty. I mean, it takes a lot of bad jokes to finally start making some good ones. This episode is the conversation about humor you always wanted, and it's awesome. So definitely tune in. I know you'll enjoy it. Because it's not the scale that people love. Going up. Unfunny. Guys, uh, uh, why were you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Why were you. Okay, so being funny is hard, especially when you're not funny. Like, I remember <laughs> when I was not funny at all, which was very painfully obvious in seventh grade. I remember it was like, I was like, just like, here's the thing, a joke, unconsciously, it gets built up, it expresses itself consciously, and then it comes split second, and that is hard when it doesn't even <laughs> pop up in your head, right? Like, the reason, the cool thing that, like, me, like, you know, when we crack jokes is that it just comes out of nowhere, essentially, right? Like, it just yeah. drops in your head, you know, from, like, a little angel, and it comes in your head, and you come, it spews out your mouth, yeah. and boom, it's a joke. Over, but angel just flies over, drops they- a turd. <laughs> That's right. a little turd right into your head. But when you don't have that angel dropping that turd of humor and comedy in your head, mm-hmm. you're like, dude, how are these people doing it? It's not coming to me. It's not. It, it, it is the most infuriating thing in the world. Uh, yeah. Guys, real quick, how painfully unfunny were you guys growing up? So for me, so not funny. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, it was like I could be really funny at random points, but like you said, it was so random that I couldn't replicate it and I would have no <laughs> idea why. So like I would just say something and all of a sudden all my friends around me would be like dying of laughter and I would be like, how'd that happen? <laughs> right. Uh, so that was the frustrating part. It's like, I, I was like, man, like if I could do this all the time, that'd be great, but I couldn't. Army, would you say, so when I met you, you were basically a seven-year-old. <laughs> like, you look completely different. <laughs> you were, I, <laughs> I, I met him, I met you, like, when you were, what, like, 20 or, ni- or no, no, like, 19? No, 18. I was 18. 18, 18 yeah, 18. You were, like, seven years old. Uh, I guess, <laughs> like, <laughs> you were 18. You were, like, seven years old. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, I was, like, this guy has never shaved the day in his life. I, <laughs> I don't think I had started shaving. I think you're yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you had a baby face, and you were just very nice. And tell me about this. So, like, in the same way. Do you feel like you're kind of right now you're in the phase of uh, trying to experiment and play with sort of your humor side? Like you're just kind of like like you're you're more in in the sense you're trying to like you're more blossoming in the sense that like you're trying to figure out like <laughs> who am I as someone that's that makes jokes? Like what does that mean to my identity? Because I had a, I had an entire phase for like a couple of years where like for yeah. years, dude, for years, even in high school, where I was like. As a, as a funny person or as a person that my at my humor style, like who who is that? How who am I? Right, sure. and I think right now I'm actually like I'm pretty in line, but that took years, right? I'm I'm pretty like I, I kind of know who I am in a humor sense. Like I know, right? Do you feel like you're in that period of sort of like 
Yeah, dude. And I think I don't know if it's like because I've done this before, right? Where like I remember in like seventh grade, I started like kind of changing my approach to humor, and like that was a really good year for me. Like I learned a lot, um, just in terms of dealing with people and whatnot. Um, next, but yeah, I would getting, say it's next, happening. Next getting beat the fuck up. It was a great year for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like I would say I'm still definitely doing more of that now. Where it's more like I know the kinds of humor I like, but it's being socially socially intelligent about when you display those like there are I love, I love, times. I love, sorry i don't mean to cut you off but i love kevin's comment where it's like that's the most useless thing to say it's like it's <laughs> like it's like someone going up to someone and being like like we're gonna say that throughout the entire podcast it's a very central concept we'll probably it's have super important but yeah i mean it's we'll, tough, we'll right? probably have like an entire podcast breaking down social intelligence but like right. it, it's sort of like going up to someone who has bad grades and being like Study more. Just, just no, 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 no. It's not even that. It's just being like, just, just be smarter. Like, just, yeah, like, be a good student. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, so uh, like a better way to put that is basically understanding the uh, worldview of the people you're talking to and where they're coming from and the kind of humor they're generally exposed to, and adapting your own personal style to fit that environment. Uh, so like for me, you know, I live in San Francisco, like there, Tom Segura has a great joke where he's like, everywhere in America is very predictable when you visit it. Like, you know, Texas is like, you know, we like oil. And then San Francisco is like, I'm offended. And like he's like, it's totally true. And, uh, he's right. Like people here in San Francisco generally are much more sensitive to, um, more risky jokes. And those are the ones I like, uh, like I like puns and stuff too, but (laughs) also a pun man, by the way, I'm a pun man. Yeah. (laughs) That was awesome. I, yeah, I do. I, I I have yet to be just blessed with an army pun, but I am. I oh, maybe dude. you might have said one, but I oh. that I missed. But <laughs> army's got a, army's got like remember those joke books you, we had in second grade? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a hundred a hundred jokes for your family. Or I actually like. I actually know a girl, Monish. I don't think you've met her. You know a um, girl? Holy shit! Yeah, I know it's crazy. <laughs> I know one you single one. <laughs> I, I know a girl that has one of those books, and she that's actually like her, her main source of humor. She says those jokes, and she says it in the way. I want her to be a stand-up comedian because she just says stupid jokes that everybody knows or that everybody has heard at one point in their life stemming from one of those ridiculous humor books. And she just says them, and they're hilarious because I of her delivery. My jokes are bad. <laughs> um, I thought my jokes were bad. All right. Go ahead, Heath. <laughs> yeah, thank uh, you. No, uh, dude, I, I I was painfully unfunny when I was a kid, and because I was, I mean, I was you know classic token Indian kid, right? Uh, it's funny, it's funny because Army on this podcast is our token white guy because we're all minorities <laughs> here except Army. We're really, yeah, this is great. I'm half white. No. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it, it, it's crazy to me. Like I was so I, I remember I, I saw my friends Andrew, John, and Charlie in seventh grade. There was like a trio of just comedy, uh, comedy. Comisiados, I don't know. And they were just they were just going. I don't even know if that's a real word, but I'm just gonna say it. Like uh, it. It's, it sounds appropriate. Comisiados. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> sounds Spanish. And they were so funny. And I remember, I mean, they they would get the attention of girls. They would get the attention of guys. Like guys even wanted to suck their dicks. And I I was, I mean, I, me too. I and I remember I was like, <laughs> they're so funny. And I, the jokes they just don't come to my head. They just they just don't pop in my head. And it was so infuriating. I was like. I didn't know. Maybe part of it. Part of it was I was very quiet, and I was very, you know, I was classic nerd. I was, you know, rela- I was just <coughs> quiet person who doesn't want to be quiet. Um, the smart kid who wants to be smart, but smart in that cool way, where like you're respected for your like your yeah. grades, but you also play football on the side, so like <laughs> girls dig you. Yeah. And I was not that at all. And it just didn't come to my head. So I was like, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to do something about it. So every single day, I made the decision to watch. Two hours of stand-up comedy. I, I I subscribed to Joke of the Day on Comedy Central when that was a thing. I s- subscribed to like two or three Joke of the Day things. They're always awful jokes, but they at least got me in like the thinking about humor. And I would mimic, I'd mimic sort of stand-up comedian styles, right? Mm-hmm. I would even practice in front of the mirror telling a joke. And the first joke, I will never forget this. The joke, the first joke, probably the stupidest joke I ever made, but the first joke I made that got the whole class laughing was my English teacher basically wrote something. She was doing a sentence predicate exercise, and she's like, the stove was hot. And as soon as she said that, I was like, like me. And then (laughs) two beats later, Katie, 
bust out laughing. The, a wave, a wave of humor, a wave of just great humor that clicks with people just came, crashed into my earwaves. I got a boner. I left. They were laughing <laughs> at you. Yeah. It's like he's like, so not. Nice. That, that would be that would be the worst. So that would be enough. that would be the worst if like that would be like you you think back and like you should hey. ask her ask her like, yeah. hey do you remember when I said that joke she'll be like oh yeah you look like such an idiot. <laughs> Doesn't e- either way it gave me sort of completely the ruins his life. It, it gave me sort of the great feedback loop where like oh I got positive feedback from real people in real time. That's giving me the ounce of confidence being like hey I'm capable of doing this I'm capable of doing this and dude for the next like especially in eighth grade i was a, i was a fucking i turned from like quiet dude in seventh grade to like the kid busting jokes in eighth grade and annoying the shit out of the teacher uh yeah. and just like I, I remember i remember just making a joke in class it was like it's so risky because you say it out loud to everybody and if you if it fails oh i mean horrible one of the worst feelings ever yeah, I and think, I, yeah, I've done that before. Oh. And, but 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 if 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 you win, I mean, you feel you win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, army, you win. <laughs> <laughs> if you win, you, you win. win. <laughs> yeah. Um. No, I was just gonna say that. Um. I think another thing too, like when you're younger and you're like, oh my god, I'm so not funny, and I think, and then you, all, there's always like one or two kids in your class who are just making everybody laugh all the time. Like they're the risk takers who make the jokes in class. Maybe even get the teacher laughing, which is you know always. That, that, uh, that, that Anthony Jeselnik said uh, in his interview. That's the like, win, yeah, yeah. No. Um, like you can't go wrong when you do that. Um, but the problem is like when you're in middle school and you feel like an idiot, right? Because you're not doing that. But a lot of those kids, their humor, like yeah, they just have a natural sense of humor for like that age, right? Like whatever, you're all like ten to fourteen, um, and it works then. But then they get into high school, and maybe it works a little bit, but not as well. And then they get into college, and it's just. They haven't grown out of it, and that's like the only thing they learn how to do. Um, and again, then they're like kind of how I was, where it's like it's all by accident. Like they're funny every now and then, but most of the time they just sound like an immature idiot, which is what they've essentially allowed themselves to become when it comes to humor. Um, so, point being, like it, humor is very specific to the people you're around and your oh, age. So important. Yeah, and also, um, like basically, you're you can your humor is malleable. You can change it over time. Uh, and that's like you said, like that's one of the things I'm still figuring out. Like my humor, my sense of humor is generally pretty similar. Like the kinds of jokes I make, uh, there's a spectrum, but they're probably not going to change a whole lot at this point. It's more of how I present those to the people I'm around. Like I had this one friend of mine, uh, who's a great girl. Like she's a ton of fun to be around, very smart, but she is definitely, um, cannot, yeah, she's on the the more mild spectrum of like risky jokes. Like she cannot take the uh the more risky stuff. Um and that's you, fine. Like you make fun of a chair and she's like that's so mean against chair makers, army. <laughs> yeah, like they work hard to make that. They work hard. Like if I said a dead baby joke like around her, she would not be happy. Um right, right. yeah, that kind of person. He, dude, the brilliant point you made was that humor can be relative. I mean, there's nothing worse than being <laughs> than being in a friend group that does not value your humor and i've been in that before where it's like they one of the value worst it. one of the just really worst it, it, and, and it, it, it's the thing is it's very subtle so but it it, it kills you a little bit inside just by how subtle and nuanced right. it's like monish do you like, remember when we were at that that pregame thing um you know what i'm talking about yeah, we went to, before. You know, <laughs> we're, sitting, we're sitting on the couch with Mo, me and Monish and I are sitting on the couch, and we just know that anything we say is going to be ignored <laughs> by these people. We just—it was and just so awful. And, and, and I was trying, and I knew some of them, so I was up there talking to them. You know, I, I get up there and Kevin tried so hard to sort of, you know, get like sort of just just to make friends, like just to be a normal human being. Yeah, and yeah. It was and, just and not. They, land. It was not. It, by the way, Kevin is incredibly socially intelligent, but it was not landing because they all suck. Yeah, it was pretty rough, and it wasn't like they were saying, like, dude, shut the fuck up, you're not funny, <laughs> anything like insane. that. It was would have been purely, insane scenario. <laughs> it was purely just, you know, I'd say something, I'd, I'd crack a little joke, and they'd kind of, like, maybe smile a little bit, and then continue right. on talking, whatever conversation they were having, without even acknowledging me. It's, it's, you just know. You're they just, do that little sideways glance with their eyes, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, look yeah. at the kid exactly. trying to make the joke, and then move on. Yeah. yeah. Which is I mean, it just cause, felt cause, real cause, horrible. So Monish and I are sitting there like, let's get this, this is, fuck out. This is, I'm, I'm sorry, but me and you 
and my girlfriend at the time we were just sitting on the couch but we were easily the most awesome people at that entire thing. <laughs> yeah. like i was like i was like, like the thing was the main guy the, the thing is like the main guy would make a joke that's awful right he was talking about molly cyrus like the the uh, oh my god yeah oh, that that's insane happy. song by i just wanted the molly yeah. <laughs> yeah it's the most stupidest song in the world and he was making jokes about that and then like people were like oh that's so funny and then Kevin would make an actual amazing like joke, and then people were like, "Yeah, okay." And <laughs> it, it, but but I'm, th- that was just a, that was a pregame we were at. But I'm saying like when you're in high school, you actually you have actual circle circle you have actual social circle circles circle. circles <laughs> circle circles okay. you have you have actual circle circles, uh, and it's just you realize that oh wow they're not laughing mm-hmm. as hard as everyone else. Or that's a really good point. Is that sometimes it's just it's not that you're not funny. It's just everyone else sucks. <laughs> Like yeah. that happens. I, I think mean, a I've, lot. Of I've times, left. I've left. And you know what? It can also just be that your sense of humor doesn't match with theirs. Yeah, whatever. and it's quite but in the particular time that Monish and I are talking about. It was that we were just better than them. Let's be honest. <laughs> 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 it's it insane. totally was that they sucked. Um. Yeah. I mean. I mean. The thing is that I. I think. Find people who think you're funny because that's going to give you. The confidence that will give you the confidence to to improve your sense of humor because if you're willing to make a joke in the first place, like if you practice basketball in a gym where everyone's kind of on your same level, you're gonna practice more because you're more comfortable doing it and you're more you're more comfortable shooting hoops. But if you practice like on a on a court where everyone's like NBA level, you're gonna not you're gonna feel that very deep sense of wow, I am so inadequate. I am yeah. painfully inadequate, right? A big point I want to bring up here in the mating mind, which is Jeffrey uh, Jeffrey Miller's huge tome of a goddamn book, by the way. Holy fuck nuts! It's like five six hundred pages. His theory: he's an evolutionary psychologist. He has a beautiful, he's brilliant, by the way. Beautiful theory about so being funny. Uh, so the, the reason people have traits when they grow up or w- when they evolve is, you know. People think the reason we have certain traits is because it has adaptive uh, reasoning, right? So like, oh, the reason that guys have muscles and can breathe is because that helps us survive, right? Or, or our they, brain... they want to get pussy. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, so a reproductive right function or a survival mechanism, right? So either I want to survive or I want to reproduce, right? And the thing is being funny, making music, that has no survival there's no survival like making a joke is not going to help you survive in the wilderness right but it does have very clear but a the bear thing is, is attacking you and you just make a nice <laughs> knock like, knock oh, oh god my leg guys you got me. oh jesus <laughs> there he is love, the pun I guy love army. Re- <laughs> i would love to see a recut of the revenant with leonardo DiCaprio telling a <laughs> knock knock joke as he's getting attacked by the bear yeah. um but no i mean so the thing is that if women, the, the the way, so if a, if a guy says, I'm smart, right? Intelligence is a real trait that women look in, in for guys because if a guy is intelligent, it means they're going to, they're more likely to survive. They're more likely to have smarter kids. They're more likely to have easier lives. All that things, right? But the thing is just saying I'm intelligent, it's, <laughs> that doesn't work, right? Being funny is a signal of your intelligence, right? It's a hard to, f- so the, the term is it's a hard to fake signal, right? So women love funny guys obviously because guys that can make a joke you can't fake a joke you can't fake like there's no way to like you can fake oh i, I you know i honest that joke wasn't real okay <laughs> <laughs> can you take those laughs back it was completely <laughs> synthetic girls, I, feel really I don't believe in that, that joke i don't i don't believe in it i just i don't Sorry. <laughs> it was artificial yeah but the thing the thing is so that's so powerful about um about humor is that a joke demonstrates actual intelligence, and that's why funny guys get status in school, in high school. And if you're if you're funny, uh, you're more likely to do better with friends and women. I mean, there was a study that Army showed me, but humor predicts mating success. Guys that are funny are more likely to score with the fucking tone, bro. It's hella yeah, tight. It is hella tight. <laughs> uh, so I mean, that's. Humor is important because it hel- it also helps you facilitate relationships, right? Like, yeah, like like I would honestly say that the first time me and Kevin met, a lot of our friendship was based on sort of the 
the groundwork for it was sort of based on the bedrock of humor. Yeah, we, we were just cracking I would jokes. say most of the best relationships I've had, both like just friends and girlfriends, that kind of thing, have been because we had a similar sense of humor. My friends on campus, my closest friends that I've gotten really, really tight with them in the, in the past few months, the reason why we've gotten so close is because our senses of humor are super in sync. And, and I was just saying that humor is, is an incredible social utility. And it's and that's something that I've I've tried to capitalize on my entire life. Um, I never really was. I, I don't think that I was a funny kid. I think over time I started to, to build a reputation as being funny amongst my close groups of friends. Yeah, I was never like a class clown. I was never comfortable enough to just make jokes out loud in class. And uh, because I've done it a few times and it's just usually ended out terrible. <laughs> right. Uh, I, growing up, I was definitely the funny kid in high school or one of the funny kids. And one of the main, the weird ways in which I kind of got to that point was I imitated initially in like seventh grade, eighth grade, the guys I thought were funny. Right. And like just, just how I mimicked stand up comedians I would mimic the mannerisms of like my friends, right? I would like I, even down to like how they would say what's up. And I'm like, oh, that's a, they're kind of cool the way they say what's up to their friends. I should probably kind of say in that intonation with that cadence with that kind of, right? Um, a friend I'll never forget is Andrew Cunningham. He, he was like the guy I wanted to be because he was a minority. That was funny. And, and he, like I, I just saw myself in him. Like he was, he wasn't like too mean. He was like, a nice dude. He was, he had like sort of an edgy sense of humor, but it was all good natured. And he, he helped me sort of in a weird way in the, in the way that writers mimic other writers as they're learning and then form into their own. I think mimicking on a very, in, in a sense kind of helps you test out the waters and to where your identity is, who you are. Right. A lot of who we are as human beings is just like bits and pieces of things that we pulled from different people that we've met. Sure, dude. I think it's really like everything when you think about it. Like you can't really, like if you just put a baby in a box, <laughs> not saying I've done this like from personal experience, but if you just left a baby in a box for like oh, 10 years. Oh, I've done years, that a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you just left it in like a white box for 10 years, it wouldn't be able to do anything. It wouldn't talk. Like everything you, you've learned is from like pulling every little bits away from yeah, other yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I think that's 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 really how my sense of humor developed. I mean, as with everybody, but I really focused on same as you, Monish. Not necessarily stand-up comedians, but just the kids in class who were funny. Because I desperately wanted to be a what, funny. Kid in you class. wanted to be them, right? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to be them so bad. They they were always they were like my mini heroes. So <laughs> the kid the kid who could crack jokes in class and everybody liked him. You know, I always yeah. wanted to be that person. And it's oh, yeah. funny because if you ask pretty much anyone who knows me well whatsoever the first the first thing they would say to describe me is that I'm funny and that's not me like trying to say that I'm super funny or anything I just know that's how I'm perceived by other people fucking blue and, shirt Kevin that's how I describe him <laughs> 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 fucking ugly um, Kevin so yeah, over I, time I, I'm sorry go ahead no I was just gonna say some bogus he was gonna ridicule about, you I was gonna oh, ridicule yeah. you and yeah, then I was like you, yeah, yeah, eh, you know Kevin's kinda nice uh, I like he has him. a blue like shirt him. he's Asian uh, what else what else uh, <laughs> <laughs> took his shirt off during the podcast. Come on, <laughs> play with his balls. You're like you're like the end of Eight Mile, where you're like the end of Eight Mile, where Eminem's like, "I'm a bum. I live with my mom." I like we're just like telling everything. What are you gonna do? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> but uh, throughout throughout school, I really tried to pull behavior and and just everything from the funny people that I saw. And obviously, I think I I kind of developed my own sense of humor outside of them too. But now now that I'm not in high school anymore and I, I'm not in that restricted environment where I'm af kind of afraid to try to be funny. I think definitely s since, since uh, being in college, my sense of humor has exploded. And I think that definitely me being funny is, is one of the huge aspects of my character that I think people would really – People, I think people would just really describe me as being a funny person. And it's, and it's because it's it's been you know, 20 years of me trying really? to pull bits and pieces from other people and, and just observing comedy and trying to learn from it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. 
ultimately it's resulted in whatever my sense of humor is now. And I think that I'm, I'm that being said, I think I'm still in that phase you described regarding army Monish when you said that he's kind of testing the water and, and really trying to see what type of sense of humor he falls into or whatever. I, I think that I very much am in that same stage. And, and I think perhaps that stage really just potentially is just lasts forever because right. Yeah, your, your yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a good thing because you're getting better, right? It's you're constantly. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a, there's a there's a there's a few sta- thinking of stages. There's a few stages of competence, I guess. That's kind of interesting to go through. That I think is especially relevant and painfully relevant when you're trying to be funny. And and the four the four stages of competence is sort of unconscious incompetence, conscious incompetence, conscious competence, and unconscious competence. Uh, those all sound like the same. But Jesus. yeah, but okay. So unconscious incompetence is basically when you are an idiot you, and you don't know it. Yeah, it's like the guy who never has been in a fight before, but thinks he can beat everyone up. But he's had no training. Does not. He's never never thrown a punch. That guy would truly be fucked up in a punch. In the same way that someone who is is so painfully unfunny, but they don't know. They have no idea. They have no. They, they have no, They've never made a joke, but they think they're hilarious or whatever that is unconscious incompetence and then when you start practicing when you start actually making jokes you start getting conscious incompetence where you are very aware that you suck but you're getting better (laughs) right and then conscious competence is where where i was at for seventh and eighth grade right conscious competence is where consciously you have to construct jokes it has to be at the front of your mind right but you can you can do it right. You're competent. You can make a joke right, but it's got to be yeah. in the front of your mind. And then finally, I would say a stage that we're all at um, would sort of be. And of course, we're trying to get better every day, regardless. Even though we're at, we're at the stage, is unconscious unconscious competence, where unconsciously jokes are being formed and they just pop up in your head, which is the final right. sort of stage. If you were to try to get funnier, like systematically. Um, what would you think would be the number one thing to do? Um, I would say hang out with people you find funny. Yeah. Like, because, yeah, yeah I, like watching stand up is great. I love stand up and I think it helps a lot. I think reading books helps uh, less so than stand up, but it still helps. But that's but the reason I say like hang out with people who you find funny are because generally those people are going to be in the same social circles as you. They're going to be presenting it in a way that is uh, appropriate for that group. Um, like the way, uh, let's say like Larry, the cable guy does jokes would be very different than, I don't know, like Louis CK or somebody else. Like basically everybody, has a different, yeah, <laughs> like ev- yeah. everybody has a different sense of humor and it's the people you find funny. Like those are also the people you, like we talked about that you probably want to be like. So once you get, you get instant feedback too, as you're making, you're right. cracking jokes with each other. You see what works, what doesn't. And something that's cool is that's, uh, that's actually something that, Louis C.K. does is he well? I've heard this. I, I haven't heard him say this. Before. Yeah, he told me last week. Yeah, yeah. yeah when I was hanging out. <laughs> he told me up. Is he goes? He goes to he goes to smaller clubs, kind of unannounced. Yes, and he just te- he this. tests material. Yeah, and that's what you're doing when you just hang out with people. Really, is you're you're testing the material, especially people who fall within your social circle. And you have a similar sense of humor. You, you're developing your sense of humor as you just talk and joke around with them. And then you can apply what you've learned in different social situations. Right. You know, when you meet new people or when you're at a party, you can kind of gauge how people are going to respond to your humor based on the feedback you've received the when big, joking around with your friends. Yeah. The big one is that you get immediate feedback. So if you're a shitty comedian, <laughs> you get immediate feedback. Yeah. Immediate, like just the immediate, just oh, just that feeling. And the the military uses for to improve strategy for combat operations. They call this the OODA loop, right? So it's observe, orient, decide, act, right? And I used to do this uh, not with humor, but with just other areas of my life. I would observe what happens, figure out what's the feedback being given, good or bad. If it's good, keep on doing it. If it's bad, right? If it's bad, orient yourself. So reorient. What did I learn from this? Uh, basically decide, okay, I'm going to go with this and then act, right? And uh-huh. that OODA loop should be running whether you actually write it out, but OODA, it's a funny OODA. OODA. OODA, 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 OODA. 
Sounds like should club be music. running right. <laughs> um, also, a lot of what I think stops people from making a joke is just sort of insecurity and a lack of confidence, and they can yeah, be really yeah, funny yeah. in their heads. Which I, I kind of think that Kevin might have been like, you were very funny in your head, uh, but like you weren't yeah. you didn't have the confidence to make a joke in the first place. And so here's the point I want to make about confidence, real quick. Low confidence can be an amazing thing. Um, because low, <laughs> low confidence spurns you to action. It, it is lit- like the yes. reason I am good at the areas of my life that I'm good at is because I had low confidence there. Everyone thinks, oh, if you have high confidence, you're going to do, you're more competent and your confidence is not as good as people think it is. It's great to have, but it does not give the benefits that people think it does. And having low confidence, uh, is more likely to spurn you to action because if you are painfully bad at something, um, you are more likely to spend precious time and resources into getting better at that. And Absolutely. once you start practicing, it forces you to practice, right? Um, improv, probably the number one suggestion, by the way, if you have a good improv group in your uh, place. Uh, improv will, I mean, it is literally practicing to be funny in like a very safe environment where you can sort of build that confidence Dude, in real time. I, I love my group of friends on campus, Monish, the, the ones that you've met, you know, yeah. uh, like Jeremy and them, they, my, my friends on campus army, we we're all super, super in tune with our sense of humor. And we all, every single one of us, there's, there's like three mainly, um, of my friends that I'm talking about. And we all pretty much want to pursue a career in comedy at, somehow. Right. Yeah. And, we're so self-aware of our own humor that when we joke around with each other, we'll actually say, we'll tell each other if the joke was good or bad or if something. They said. <laughs> like if someone says something really funny, I, I'll, I might be like, damn, that was a really good one. Or they'll say the same thing to me. And, and then if I say something that's not funny at all, I'll, I'll probably catch myself right away and be like, damn, that one sucked. And then they'll be like, yeah, that was pretty big. <laughs> and so we get such instant feedback and, and it really helps to develop my sense. It's, it's like having my own little improv group too, That's because really, we, yeah. we actually, we engage in, in these little improv scenarios all the time as well. So it's, it's super, super cool. And I'm, I'm super glad to have people who are as, uh, as serious about their, right. Their cause I mean, when you have like a small group of friends who acts as your improv group, which is, which is even like amazing because it's two birds and one stone almost like you exactly. got awesome friends. And then they're also like hilarious is, uh, is you get to test the waters. You get to test like which jokes are socially intelligent, uh, which jokes are yeah. on the edges of acceptability. I mean, a lot of humor is sort of found in the edge of acceptability, right? Like where is that edge, right? Because no, no one, no one's, I mean, no one's really, people are trying to figure out what, where's the line? How, how do I, how do I, just timing, all, all of the, humor is really hard to deconstruct. But getting those separate pieces working in sort of a single harmony, I think, is uh, is really great when you have that constant feedback. Right? Yeah, definitely. Any any last thoughts? Um, I would say it just takes time. Like a lot of times, people again, it's like, oh, I'm just so unfunny. Uh, yeah, you can't just be funny. All yeah, you can't just like it's not like a switch you just turn on. And like yeah. honestly, like there are a few moments in my life where I'm like, damn, I need to like find a book to like figure this out. Like there's got to be a pattern here. <laughs> Seth, and Seth Godin has a great quote where uh, you can't read a book about sex and be great in the sack. Right? No. Yeah. Um, books are amazing unless you're a savage. Like. <laughs> <laughs> unless you're fucking tight. Uh, yeah, books are amazing, but experience, practice in the real world is is yeah. Impressive. And then also yeah. too, like don't make humor your one tool for making friends or you know building relationships. Yeah, yeah. Like that that, that, that that was my problem in high school. Right. I used humor as the only way in which I would make friends instead of actually like spending time with them and whatever. And I had I had like every, I was really well liked in high school. I was probably in the top twenty percent of kids by like junior year i was really well liked uh semi-popular but not like in the popular kids group but like well liked and (laughs) sorry i said well liked like 20 times uh but i didn't have that many close friendships at all like i was i I was friends with everyone and friends with no one at the same time it was was, right so deep (laughs) (laughs) right i mean I, i had like my best friend and a uh, smaller circle, but it was never like a really healthy like 
semi, uh, you know, social, I was, I was bouncing around everywhere, you know, mm-hmm. I was, so. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I agree. Well, you know, that's how, yeah. <laughs> that's how it goes, you know. Yeah, you know, it goes how it goes. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, some people are funny. If you're funny, yeah, you're yeah, sometimes get... not. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you're not funny. It's okay. <laughs> we should make a whole podcast. Well. Hey, hey, you know, hey. hey you know. Just, what just should we do about the... global warming? Hey, you know, like, it's like <laughs> the most big <laughs> person of all time. <laughs> hey, well, we can do something like it. If you love the podcast, but you hate taking notes, <laughs> great. Uh, we actually got something for you that's really cool. Go to the website, www.realtalkstudio.com. Again, that's www.realtalkstudio.com. And sign up to be a Real Talk Insider. Basically, the most uh, fancy way of saying sign up for the email list get email updates, get episode breakdowns. For Basically, it's a breakdown of each episode. It's got notes, summaries, uh, research, and an action plan for each uh, podcast. And yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. Special thanks goes to Army for helping out with research, Kevin for helping out with editing, Vishali, my amazing sister, for helping out with content, and CJ Beats for uh, powering this podcast one hot rhyme at a time. This is Real Talk, signing off.